Kara Smith-Bagagnis, and I'm here to tell you about the V-Notch and Pluton, our minimalist down and synthetic fill ultralight mummy bags. These ultralight bags are highly compressible, minimalist sleeping bags. The V-Notch UL features a cozy lining of 80% recycled Prima Loft, High Loft Ultra Silver insulation, while the Pluton UL is comprised of incredibly lightweight and packable 850 fill down tech down insulation. These bags feature a minimalist hood with draw cord, featuring a low profile cord lock that lets you cinch and uncinch the hood with one hand. The full length zipper can be opened up for quilt use, and the two way zip provides easy temperature regulation. Both bags feature an ergonomic foot box construction for more loft and warmth. Streamlined exterior loops create hang drying and storage options. The V-Notch and Pluton are made up of a nylon ripstop shell fabric featuring a water repellent finish. The lining is comprised of the same water repellent nylon ripstop. The V-Notch's insulation is made up of Prima Loft High Loft Ultra Silver, while the Pluton features 850 fill, Blue Sign certified, Down Tech water repellent down. Our minimalist mummy bags will keep you warm and keep your pack light, whether that's a backpack, bike pack, or pack rack. With Ben's Clothing and Gear, you can turn the clothing you wear and the gear you carry into a powerful layer of insect protection. Used in conjunction with skin repellent, this bug spray gives you total protection from disease-carrying insects. Ben's Clothing and Gear features an EPA-registered 0.5% permethrin formula, recommended by the Centers for Disease Control to repel mosquitoes that may carry the Zika virus and ticks that may carry Lyme disease. Shake the bottle well, then hold the bottle six to eight inches away and spray with a slow sweeping motion to lightly moisten the fabric. Spray until the surface is visibly darkened. Let treated items dry for at least two hours before using. Refer to the package instructions for further details. This convenient 24 ounce pump spray contains enough repellent to treat four complete outfits or two sets of gear. The ergonomic bottle grip is designed to comfortably fit in your hands and features a locking safety nozzle. Whether you're treating your hiking, hunting, or fishing gear, Ben's Clothing and Gear 24 ounce provides you with reliable insect protection to keep you bite free even in the buggiest conditions. Don't get bitten, get Ben's. Hey guys, today we are checking out the Eureka Ignite stove. This thing is awesome, I love it. It's the perfect stove for a weekend of car camping with friends. And today I'm gonna to walk you through what it's all about. With the Ignite, you get the easy and precise control of home cooking in the outdoors. With most other camp stoves, you get two settings, on or off. With the Ignite, you get a huge range of adjustability thanks to Eureka's two-turn ultimate simmer control. This allows you to really dial in the heat output of each burner individually, and you'll never have to worry about uneven omelets or burnt bacon again. The other great thing about the Ignite is the drip tray here is actually made from stainless steel, which makes cleanup really easy. With the Ignite, you also get rubber non-slip feet that keep it from sliding. It also comes with a super reliable push button igniter, which means you don't have to worry about bringing a lighter with you. The burners are spaced far enough apart that you can get two 10 inch pans on there no problem, which means you got plenty of options when it comes time to whip up some meals for your group. It comes with a regulator so you can hook it up to a propane tank and it's also JetLink compatible, which means you can hook it up to other Eureka and JetBoil cook systems and run it off a single propane source, just like we have with the Gonzo Grill right here. All in all, the Ignite is a fantastic compact stove that lets you bring the cooking performance of your kitchen range with you camping.
Hey, I'm Miranda with the REI Co-op. A pack can make or break your backpacking trip, and there are tons of awesome options out there right now. Let's take a second to geek out about packs. When choosing a pack, one of the first things you need to decide is the capacity. The capacity of a pack is largely going to depend on the type of backpacker you are. For example, if you're an ultralight backpacker, you're probably carrying a lot less gear and you can get away with something much smaller. Whereas if you like to have some luxury, then you're probably going to want a larger pack. But generally speaking, if you are doing a weekend trip, you're looking at a pack like this one that's somewhere between 30 and 50 liters. This pack here is a 45 liter pack. These are great for weekend trips, for overnights, or for warm weather backpacking where you don't need to carry a lot of heavy gear. If you're looking for a multi-day pack, you're gonna want something that's somewhere between 50 and 70 liters. This is my pack here, and it's a 60 liter pack. These are great for carrying some additional items, uh, as well as layers, clothing, and more food and fuel. So this is a pretty common size pack, and it'll work for a multitude of different trips. If you're looking for something that is going to carry a lot of gear, you're looking at an extended trip pack. So something like this one here, which is 100 liters. Extended trip packs cover anything that's 70 liters and above. These bags are really designed to haul a ton of gear. So they're good for mountaineering or for extended winter backpacking where you're carrying a lot of heavy layers in gear. But they're also great for parents who are backpacking with children if they need to carry their kids stuff in the pack as well. A quick note on ultralight backpacking, if you're looking to get your base weight, and that's the weight of your pack, minus consumables, so all of your gear minus your food, your fuel, and your water, if you're looking to get that weight under 10 or 12 pounds, then you're probably looking at a pack that's a lot simpler and a lot lighter. Something more like this guy here. You can have your pack actually weigh a lot less on its own because the gear that you're putting inside is going to weigh less and it's going to be significantly smaller. Okay, so that's capacity. A pack's frame is designed to transfer weight from your shoulders and onto your hips for a more comfortable carry. There are two main types of pack, of pack frames right now, the internal frame and the external frame. This pack here has an internal frame, and this is certainly the more common type of pack nowadays, uh, and they're definitely lighter than external frame packs. There are a few different ways that a pack may have this internal frame. This one has metal tubing that runs around the outside of the pack, but they may also have a metal V shape or even just a hard sheet of plastic, like this pack here. This is definitely not designed to carry as much weight as an internal frame pack like this, but it's a good option for ultralight backpackers and it will still provide some structure. The other type of frame on a pack is an external frame pack. These used to be the go-to, but we now have an updated design with the internal frame packs. These bags are very durable, the frames are very durable, um, but they're not as common and you really don't find them very much anymore. These are a good option for people who want to lash a lot of gear to the outside of their pack. So they're a good choice for hunters or anyone who's going to be carrying unusually sized loads. And they're also just a really good throwback if you want to experience what backpacking used to be like. Some ultralight backpackers will choose to use frameless packs. While these don't do as good of a job of transferring the weight to your hips, you may not need that if you're carrying a lot less stuff. These are basically just rucksacks that have backpack straps attached. To offer some protection, you can add a closed cell foam sleeping pad on the inside of the pack, and this will protect your back from the gear inside and provide a little bit of structure. Keep in mind that any features that you add to your pack are also going to add weight. So you want to strike a balance between the ease of use of the pack and the additional weight that you're adding. There are a ton of different features that you may find on backpacks, so we're just going to cover a few of the pretty common ones. The first one is access. Most packs are going to have top loading access, like this one. This is just a cinch cord that opens up and allows you to get to all of your gear. You may also find packs that have side zippers or U-zippers. This gives you access into the main compartment of the pack so you can get items that are at the bottom or in the middle of the pack. This is a feature that I love. I think it's really easy. Some packs may also have detachable pieces that turn into day packs, like this one. This lid here has straps that come out and then this can be taken off and used as a day pack for day hikes. Packs may also have this turn into a hip belt or you may find packs that have a removable reservoir that comes out. Uh, this is a really awesome feature if you plan on backpacking in somewhere and then day hiking from wherever you're setting up camp. 
My pack has the, side, or the panel loading access and then it also has a removable day pack. And these are two features that I love. Another really common feature is pockets. So packs may have pockets on the side for water bottles or two pockets on the hip for different items that you might want to stash. You can see this pack here has a water bottle side pocket that you can access while the bag is on your back. Uh, and then there's this shovel pocket in the front, which is great for stashing an extra layer. There also might be pockets that are in the lid um, or in the bottom of the lid, like this one has that here. Packs will also have lash points or daisy chains on the outside. This is for strapping sort of strange loads to the pack or if you want to attach your crampons on the outside of your pack so they don't scratch up the inside. Um, and then packs may also have tool attachment points for attaching ice axes or this one has a spot for attaching trekking poles. That's just a couple of the features. There are a ton out there. Keep in mind that when you're looking at packs, you'll want to look for features that you believe will add value and avoid packs that have features that you don't think you want. Again, there's a ton out there. So that might be extra cushy hip belts, which you want. It might be a separate compartment for a sleeping bag and just make a decision on what you find valuable and what you don't want in your pack. The most important thing about choosing a pack is finding one that fits you comfortably. Packs come in a variety of frame sizes or torso lengths that relate to your back size. There's so much information on how to fit your pack, so we have an entire video about it, and we'll link that in the description below. Once you have a pack that fits you, you can use the straps to adjust the fit. There are also women-specific packs, and those are gonna have a slightly different fit to them and different features, such as straps that cut out a little bit sooner or hip belts that provide a little bit more cushion or a little bit larger. That's it for packs. 